I'm in the van and I'm on a trip. I've stopped off on the journey now, um, just near Dorchester off the A31 uh, to Maiden Castle. The size of it is huge, eh? up to something like 50 football pitches. I've arrived in Plimpton and here is Mr Tricker, which you need to be a little bit discreet because of the locals. Tim and I sounds like a bird at the top. It's some some form of bird. Some form. We've come away from the castle now, and we've come to the church, Saint Maurice, um, which has this rather glorious tower behind us, and we're going through this somewhat cramped and very busy graveyard with these beautiful old ornate gravestone oh, surrounded by enough. an amazing a display of wild flowers all around. Forget-me-nots I can see, we've seen some bluebells, daffodils. daffodils, dandelions, all sorts of bits and bobs and it's it's, it's quite remarkable it's lovely. isn't it? It's lovely. Totally to ourselves, the magic and the wonder Apart from Passing somebody with a windblower or something. Saw. Oh, it's a saw, a band saw. Yeah. The local band is no longer, they've been split up by the man with a band saw. Anyway. <laughs> See if it's open. Oh, huh. it's locked. It is locked, unless there's another entrance, but I don't imagine there is because this seems to be the main. But we'll walk around the other side. That entrance is locked. Is that a dead end? Oh, well, that's that then. It'll be open on a Sunday. But what a beautiful church. It's lovely. Exterior. Lovely and a lovely village to be explored. But I think uh, tea and cinnamon bun, tea and cinnamon bun sounds ideal. is beckoning. Like David Beckenham. Num. And here it is. The Church of England. Well, I have to say, I'm very impressed. But look at all these old graves that are just lining the passageway here. It's just quite uh, amazing. Brilliant idea. When do they date from 1806, this one? 1819. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what they say about Plimpton? Lovely steeple, ugly people. That's no, not true, I made that up.
made it. Made it down to Plymouth Ho. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's Tim? good. It's lovely down here. It's really, it's buzzing. It's There's buzzing. There's so many things going on down here well, tonight. We're, we're just very lucky with the weather and no doubt that's going to get everybody out. Yep. Although I made a stupid mistake. I've um, only put an hour on the van in the um, short stay car park. It'll so be okay. it, will it be all right? We can get back. It'll be okay. I'll run back and do another run. hour. Yeah. You don't do running, do you? Running? Yeah. No. No, no. But this is this is gorgeous. I've only ever been to Plymouth once before, but not as a sightseer for work. Just for work. And it's, um, it's they did drive me around a little bit yeah. and showed me a couple of things, but only from the car, not to get out. So we've done that already, but I haven't we've been able lots. to show that. So lots of things to see. But we're going to go and get some fish and chips, and no doubt we'll report more from Plymouth tomorrow. Lots to do tomorrow. Yeah, in the next Lots to do. in the next video. Right, fish and chips somewhere down here. Well, we've come into a place, I don't know what it's called, but it's got this amazing mural on the ceiling. Got a window seat. You're supposed to actually book, but um, we've wangled it. Does it say on there what it's called? I don't know what it's called, but it's a, it's a lovely, lovely place with this view here, which I don't know you can see, but out the window behind me. And um, gonna get some rather splendid chips, I think, and maybe a sausage. That's rather nice. Very lucky, it's very posh. Big tip. It's good. Got a great view. One of the best tables I would have said in the restaurant looking out onto the marina. And we've got it just on a whim. On a whim. Best way to get it, on a whim. Well, I'm in the van and I'm ready to go to sleep now. There's an app called Park for Night, and I've used that to take me up to a place called, um, what is it, Walkman Business Park or something. So I'm on a business estate. Now, this app says that there was a car park that you can park in, only the car park was closed. There was a big iron gate in front of it. So I've just gone down the road a little bit, and then there's just a number of cars. It's on the industrial estate, but it all seems very quiet, so I'm going to park here and um, I'm going to bed down for the night. It's a Thursday morning and I'm in the city. It's um, about quarter to six something like that early I spent the night in an industrial estate last night God knows where but it was very quiet and I survived in the van and I've moved down into the city to meet up with Tim Tricker very soon my van is here I've just had a bowl of cereal um, I think I'm all right here to park until about 8 a.m. but I'll chat with Tim because he might be an able to interpret the uh, the parking restrictions. It seems that it takes about half an hour behind Worthing, where I live, to get light. Because normally at six, it's quite light, but it's, it's fascinating to be in the city of Plymouth at this time in the morning. It's early in the morning. I've met up with Tim. Hello, Tim. Good morning. I've used your facilities, haven't I? You have. Which is very nice, very nice man. He said, come to my hotel boudoir, young. He's used facilities. So I've used his shower and his um, other facilities. And um, we've met a friend of ours whose name we don't know. We don't know. Or why. 
it's here, but um, we're strolling around a very nice part of um, Plymouth. Plymouth. <laughs> the, the sort of towny bit, really. But what are we going to do we're now? We're heading out down to the down to the front, which is down near the lighthouse, off to the right. Oh, are we going to look at the lighthouse? The little lighthouse. The Eddystone Lighthouse, uh, brought here by Eddie Stone Couriers. Might be a lie, that. Slightly. <laughs> We've stumbled across this beautiful little, well, clock tower, that's what you call it. I don't know, my first thought was it was erected for Queen Victoria's Jubilee with these little water fountains, beautiful little features on this and on all four sides because they did a lot of that during the old um what do you call it victoria's jubilee thing wonderful detail but the great thing about this apart from the clock up here and isolated by all this modern stuff is this very cute little door hello oh um i wonder if i could go in and just uh, wind you up a bit I imagine that somebody would have com come in here each day and wound up the clock and um, made sure that the water fountain was switched on back in 1862 that it was bought. It's a beautiful it thing, is isn't it? And, and again, I bet people walk past it without giving it the second, second thought. second glance every single day. And yet you've got all this modern monstrosities all around it. One thing about, one really good thing about being an early riser is that uh, you get up before everybody else gets up. There's nobody around. There's nobody around. You can see all the tourist attractions before the, uh, the grockles arrive. <laughs> I don't mean to be uh, impolite. Yes, I do. So we've managed to come now down to the famous bowling green to see if Francis Drake is still playing that game. But he's not. He's Can't not. See him anywhere. He's not an early riser, clearly. So, but somewhere here, I mean, there's a place here called the Ho, the public bowling green, which I reckon is probably the place where he he famously said, "Oh, the Spanish Armada." Just give me a moment. Mm, I must finish my game. Finish my game, <laughs> old chap. Carruthers. I think it's uh, your go. And then beyond that, there's this whacking great war memorial, and then the Eddystone Lighthouse. I didn't realise quite what a thing this memorial is on the sides here. And you get this amazing um, acoustics, don't you, with the, a, a, an echo coming back are the names of, well, all sorts of different people connected to the marine um, service during various wars. Escort forces, coastal forces, defensive equipped merchant ships, maritime regiment landing ships and craft, all sorts of stuff. And the names, and we've got such beautiful light as well to see all the different names that have been put here in this um, is this bronze? Whatever it is. Um, cast. Yeah. yeah. MacDonald, Macy, Madden, Maloney, Marsh, Martin, Medicott. Not many Vobeses, luckily. Um, LDG Telegraphist. You know, every, every ordinary seaman, every sort of person who served and lost their life this is from 1944 and presumably it has all the years of the war what an incredible 43, okay. 43 there we go what an incredible monument and I imagine that people must come to trace their ancestors and look them up on on here as a sort of passage of homage it's just amazing
This is a very magical place, isn't it? It's... I mean, this time in the morning, not when it's heaving with your tourists and what have you, but in the early morning light when there's the occasional dog walker and the, uh, the guys uh, cutting, the grass. cutting the grass and making it, again, very pleasant for the next day's work. And then you stumble across these incredible monuments, as we've just seen. And this, which fascinates me, I've read a book about it, the Eddystone Lighthouse, 1759, is that? Or is that 39? Absolutely wonderful. And then beyond that, you've got the English Channel, or reaches out into the English yeah. Channel, Drake Island to our immediate behind. And uh, it's a wonderful still day. And we should have brought our drones out, really. Sure. But hey ho, maybe tomorrow won't be. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, you come down here quite a lot, don't you, I do. Tim? I come down here three, four times a year to see Taylor. And Taylor is uh, at university here. I don't know if I explained that in the previous video. I probably did. Um, and yeah, what a wonderful place. It's a lovely place. But the the actual city inside must have been bombed we were having this conversation mm. during the war a lot because it was an important port and so you see all these modern buildings and a lot of the old historic buildings were presumably knocked down in the 50s and 60s and then tacked right on the end yeah is a monstrosity it's absolutely <laughs> yeah it's modern. strange it's a shame a big shame but there's still a lot to see There are people swimming, just in the sea. Yeah, just in the sea. In the, um, just remind me, what month we're in? April. I mean, I know <laughs> the sun's come out, but come there's, on, there's people. There's six there's, or seven of them in there. They're swimming in the sea. I don't know if they're, they're not diving or anything. They're just swimming just for swimming. pleasure, aren't they? I, um, I don't know how much you'll see because I don't have a very good zoom on the camera at the moment, but they're definitely in there. Pigeons have come to say hello this morning. I think they're hungry. But um, behind us is Drake's Island. I mentioned that a few minutes ago, and Tim was just telling me that he'd read how Francis Drake used to swim from the seashore to the island and back again in between games of bowls. And in fact, sometimes he would play bowls at sea with the boys, you know, the round boys that they they mark the sea with or more things to. And apparently one of them was Barnes Wallace's bouncing bomb and it blew his head off. It was a bit of a mess, but he managed to gather himself together and go and fight the Spanish Armada, which I think in spite of all that's just quite incredible. I didn't know you were a fount of such knowledge, Tim. Knowledge, fountain. Yes. There must be, there's got to be a fountain <laughs> round here with that knowledge in it. There must be. There must be one somewhere. For those of you of the gullible disposition, I may have made one or two no, facts no, up. No, no, no. All true. Oh, is it? <laughs> Good. And there's the great man himself, Francis Reginald Drake. I don't know if Reginald actually was his name, but it's, it's an appropriate name, I think. And as we know, a lot of people may not know this, he actually also invented the garden rake. Or, or, or was it the ABS break? Anyway, that's Francis Drake, famed for the Spanish Armada. And when he got the musket in him and he said, kiss me hardy, I know that was Nelson. That, that's right. He was a different chap. But that's Drake. It's a good name, isn't it? Francis. I wish I'd been called Francis.
Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Richard Vobes is in town. Are they all made aware now, Tim? They're all aware that you're in town. And they One more time, please. One more time. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Richard Bobes is in town. We're on the ferry. Where the hell are we going? I have no idea. We're on a chain-driven ferry. So it's being pulled along by the train, by the chain. And that's why it was able to just take off so quickly. I mean, seconds with which we boarded the thing, the tailgate went up and we were, gone. And we were on our way. We're going to Drake's Island, where Drake famously swam. He didn't realize there was a chain ferry. What an idiot. Ah, spoken to a lovely man here who there he is yeah. and he just told us a fascinating fact about the chain ferry can you tell us again apparently it's the biggest floating chain bridge in the world the biggest wow and we've had the privilege of going on it that's it well how lovely is that that is brilliant never been on one before and so swift yes and painless none of that shifting about no. and all that is these all that trick Diesel electric? Yeah, diesel electric. Uh, two massive uh, electric engines that drive, uh, drive chain wheels. If you go on our news, uh, our newsletter for Tamer Crossings, for, I think May last year, there's a big article on all the ferry uh, infrastructure. So. There you go, that'll please all the uh, all the sort of engine people <laughs> who watch. Thank you so much. What are you uh, filming for? Yeah, Bold Explorer Bold YouTube e channel. Oh, right, Bold Explorer. Yeah, there we are. Bold there you go. Exploring. there that says it's unsuitable for motor vehicles. No telling. Tim, wouldn't have missed this for the I world. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. This is so worth coming up here. I'm actually on the edge of Dartmoor. And I think this is the birthplace of Francis Drake, if I remember rightly. I just feel you're not taking this trip too seriously. Living in a van is obviously getting to you. Richard Vobes is in town. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Richard Vobes is in town. <laughs>